Hello, hello, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is JV's Corner. This is my review for Love After Lockup Season 3, Episode 13. We got the newbies back. Okay, the newbies are back. And when we see that life after lockup, when it starts in November, it's going to have some people from this cast and the other cast. So I can't wait for that. First things first, okay, if you have not done so already, please come on with two, subscribe to my channel, and look on my whole J-Bird, J-Bird, dun, 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 and all that goodness and stuff, okay? Y'all not want y'all to relax and to relate and to release. I want y'all to remember to breathe and to inhale and to exhale, to center yourself and everyone around you, okay? I want you to like this video, comment in the comment section. Share on your social media and everything by hitting the little share button. You can also follow me on ID and on Twitter at J underscore V's underscore corner. Bam, it's all set and done, okay? And y'all know all that stuff is down below in the description box. So let's get to these people on this crazy episode of Love at the Lockup. <laughs> First up, we have Dylan and Heather. I mean, girl, leave it be. Okay, so Dylan brings up how Heather stayed down for him the whole five years he was in jail and prison. And so he wants to just pay her back and give her what she deserves. All the goodness that she deserves of being a down-ass chick who would down for him for five whole years and ain't get no penis or whatnot. Okay, now he also has two years of parole. So he has to do drug testing him saying he has to check in with the PO and all that. So he has to stay on the up and up or whatever. Now Heather say her apartment flooded two weeks before he got home. So her aunt is letting her stay there. I feel like Okay, so they stay with her old eye or whatever. So we see they get to the house and whatnot. And Dylan's a whole little charmer, okay? He's a whole little charmer up there chit-chatting with them or whatever. Whole little chit-chat, chit-chat, okay? And the aunt is the oldest woman, you know, with the love, breathing mask on her thing. The other lady is her, is her other aunt. But they're staying with the older aunt who's in this picture holding a little thing or whatever with Dylan laughing, okay? So she's just chit-chatting with him, you know what I'm saying? And you can tell that Dylan is trying to be nice because, again, he has to live here. He needs that place to be his residence because he's on parole, okay? So he's just being nice and whatnot. The aunt was showing them family photos or whatever. He's also showing them photos of his dad. Now, the whole time, Heather ass is getting upset. She's actually getting upset at her two older aunties who was talking to the man who she brought home from prison to live there. And she's upset because they're chit-chatting, getting along. I'm like, Heather is batshit crazy or whatever, okay? And she's like, you know, they're getting all of his attention. I'm looking like, bitch, he's only been out of prison for two hours. She was acting as if he'd been in that house for five hours. And for all five hours, he'd been sitting there talking to her. It took y'all an hour to get there. Girl, she is crazy, okay? Now, she had walked away and went to the bathroom. She comes back because she was listening to them, like, just talking and getting along or whatever. She like, you know what? Y'all can do all this shit, chat over, but I, I don't feel good. You know, I need to lay down. He's like, okay, babe. Like, okay, I'll come. She's like, no. You can stay here and keep talking. I'm going to go, I'm going to go lay down. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Because you can go ahead and talk to my eyes. I'm looking like... What the fuck is wrong with her? Like, what is going on here? Now, you know, the old aunt, like I'm saying, I'm not going to have this aggravation. I ain't got time to be getting all wound up and then end up in the hospital. Because she's already old with a breathing machine there. Okay, stop making her raise her pressure. Okay, so Dylan gets up and goes to check on Heather. But he, like, you know what I'm saying, Heather has family who was gracious enough to not only let her stay. They're letting him stay fresh out of prison. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe she out here acting like a whole asshole. Like, I, like I'm just speechless, okay? Like, how can she act like I would never talk to my family, my elders like that, who is helping me and someone else I'm with? I can't believe this shit or whatever. And so, she get in the room with him or whatever. You know, it's a problem. Okay, why is it a problem? 
mom. But I want to spend time with you. You know, y'all been up there sitting around chit chat. Why is it e- they should not have equal time with you like I have? I'm looking like, what? She is really girl. Okay. Anyway, so she then say, I can't stay. Here. I need to leave because I can't be here having an orgasm and not Dorothy's in the front making Kool Aid. I'm like, well, she. I'm paraphrasing the course or whatever. Anyway, so don't like. Okay. Okay. We can leave. But he also, like him said, my parole is here. My PO will come here looking for me. I can't mess this up because this is where I paroled to. Okay. So he goes out to the aunts. Hey. Hey, aunts. We're going to go. We're going to go spend some time together, whatever. Just for like a day. Maybe two. You know, just to have some time together. But we will be back. Okay. We will still be back and living here. Okay, living here. So, old Aunt Dorothy, I'm making up her name or whatever. You know, oh, it's fine. It's fine. You know, I don't know why she's tripping or whatever, but it's okay. So, he, like, packed the bag whatever. He taking his stuff to the car. He gives the aunt's hugs. He's trying to be appreciative at the fact that they are helping them. Okay, because right now, he don't have nowhere else to go or whatever. But he still feel like I'm, like, I'm day one. I'm two hours out of prison. And she already wants us to stay somewhere else besides where I'm parole to I, but I'm going to roll with it because you know she wants some attention so I'm going to let it be that or whatever so when he's outside the car the aunt is saying to her you know what I'm saying you can't be acting jealous of him and I'm saying you know that's going to get you in trouble you know what I'm saying he's a sweetheart okay you have to learn to control yourself especially around me okay because Heather was acting plain D bitch or whatever Heather gets more upset well you're the one demanding time with my man with my husband that's a problem Auntie said, I didn't demand nothing, okay? I didn't demand anything. What are you talking about or whatever? I waited five years for him. I waited five whole years alone. Didn't have no sex, whatever. I deserve to be taken care of. I, no, I deserve to be taken care of for a change. I, I, I deserve, I'm like, he didn't d- deny you nothing. He only been out for two I was girl, if that you crazy was a person, meet it right here, whatever, okay? So the auntie was like, you know, you're being an asshole. I don't need that shit. And so Heather left or whatever and in the car, Dylan, I'm done. I'm I, I'm done. I'm looking like <sighs> She actually said Dylan should be more interested in us and not my aunts. Bitch, he was being polite, girl. She's nuts. Uncle Pop Pop, Uncle Ty Ty, Uncle 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 Pastor Daddy or whatever. What's his name? I think it was Uncle. It may have been Uncle Daddy. I'm not sure. But Uncle Pop Pop is back. You know him and Shonda, whatever. You know was a thing and whatnot. Now this is a good photo of him. You can he been working out right here. You know what I'm saying? Shoulders is real defined or whatever. Now you know he we see him in the kitchen. Making a phone call and no one's answering his call. It keeps saying the voicemail you called is full. I'm like, who we calling? Could it be Shonda or whatever? So, you know, he like, you know, I don't know what's going on or whatever you were saying. I have not talked to her. Her mailbox is full. She ain't taking my phone calls no more. And, you know, she could be dead. She could be back in prison. No, nigga, she ditched you. Okay, she got what she needed, which was bus fed in Kansas or whatever else. Who knows if she even really was only on parole. I feel like she might have, you know, not even had to be in the halfway house. And she was lying to him or whatnot. Okay. So, you know, he like, you know, you just, you expect to hear from people when you don't, you think the worst. The worst should be what it is. She dissed you, bruh. She used you, okay? She used you and stuff or whatever. So, we then see his daughter come to visit. First of all, her eyelashes are defend, is defending me in my own grass. It's just too much lash. It's just a girl. Can you see? Can you? Because that left eye looks mighty heavy. Okay, mighty heavy. Heavy, heavy. And stop. Anyway, so the daughter comes to visit. The chick chat with her dad or whatever. Yeah, oh, how you doing, dad? How have things been going with you and Shonda? He said, well, you know, I ain't heard from her since I dropped her off at the bus. And she was like, that was a long time ago, daddy. He said, yeah, it was. He has not talked to this girl in two months. It has been two months. He has not heard her, not not nail word, she, not nail phone call, not girl. I'm like, bro. had it been a week, okay, maybe she on lockdown or whatever at the halfway house and can't take phone calls. But two months, bro, 
two whole months, she used and abused you, and you ain't get no cooch or whatever. So, the dog, like, you know, what she used, you know, she did not want to be with you, she didn't care about you, she ghosted you, dad. No, she, she didn't use me. Well, dad, would you give her money? How much money did you spend? I ain't spend nothing, not much, you know, I could a little fat out of Little ten dollar her books. I'm like, you did not put only five or ten books on that girl book. You was putting at least twenty, fifty, hundred, two or whatever. Okay, you was doing enough for her to keep entertaining you the whole damn time. But you know, the daughter, like, you know, I get he probably embarrassed, so he don't want to say. But he's like, Dad, she used you. Like, I, that's what it is. So, like, I don't think that there was real feelings there. Okay, we really we care for each other. She like. Dad, I don't think that's true. Whatever. Well, look, I'm going to just keep calling her because I'm saying she could be in, in jail and forgot my address. I said, <laughs> this nigga here. Girl, he is still being delusional, okay? But I'm, I'm going to see what else he gives us this season. <laughs> Next up, Maurice and Jessica. I don't like Jessica. And not a, a for real, I don't like her, but I feel something about her was real ditzy blind. She gonna give him trouble some kind of way or whatever, and I don't like it. But again, you know what I'm saying, they still married or whatnot. So we see Maurice is happy, happy, happy. Why? Because the change, location, paperwork has finally come through, okay? He can finally go to Vegas without any issue. It's been four weeks. He's got a prison. He's been out of prison for four weeks. So it took a month, like they said, it would take. And he can now move to Vegas, and every month he has to go back to L.A. to check in to be sure that he can still be in Vegas until, I guess, he's on parole or whatever. So, again, they're happy in their house or whatever. He happy. He can be in the bed or whatever. He happy. I can be in the room. I can take my clothes off if I want to because, again, this whole month he's been squatting on his mama's couch, his cousin's couch, his family. He's been going, He's been couch hopping the whole time. So, for him, I'm finally somewhere in my own place, in my own room with my wife, I'm 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 home, and I couldn't get naked, you know, at their house. But here, I can get naked. It's funny because I was talking to my mom the other day, and she was like, "I gotta pick what, which pajamas I'm gonna wear." I'm like, "I don't really wear pajamas to bed." I'm like, "I think because for so long, you know, I live with y'all, I always had to have on pajamas when I moved out on my own." I'm looking like I don't have to wear pajamas if I don't want to. So you get the freedom of you in your own space. You can just do whatever you want to do or whatnot. Okay, so I completely get it. So when they in the house hugging and kissing, kissing and hugging or whatever, and he being ghetto, jump on the bed. Um, she's like, I gotta talk to you about something. I'm like, what? What the fuck? And I'm like, I know she's not gonna say what I think she's gonna say. And she showed enough, said it. I'm late. I'm three weeks late on my period or whatever, so I may be pregnant. I'm just like, he's been out for a month. He's been out for four weeks, and she's three weeks late, meaning she knows she's pregnant. She got pregnant the day he got out of prison. Okay, the day he got out, she got knocked up. Or it ain't his baby. I don't know what I was going to go with that. But again, that's what it was or whatever. So he like, go get a pregnancy uh, machine. She like, a pregnancy test? I got one. So she takes the test. The test comes back positive or whatever. I'm looking like, <sighs> okay. She's like, you know, I'm nervous because, again, we've only been together in the free world for a month. And now I'm knocked up. You know, some, you know, he ain't got no job. It can be kind of crazy. My family gonna be kind of upset at me. Yes, I would be too. Even though they have been married, they have been married for like four years at this point in time. Um, I also feel like you don't know him on the outside, so it's her husband. You can, but girl, it's too soon. And he like, I'm so happy. I miss so much of my first daughter's life or whatever. Me being locked up, and so I don't want to miss anything with this child. I feel like, first of all, you've already moved out of the state from where your daughter lives. You're already missing stuff with her life currently, but we're gonna leave that being whatnot. So, but he's happy. I can be a father now, you know what I'm saying, and the whole thing. I'm like, this girl, this is kind of crazy. I don't believe in anyone getting pregnant by anybody when they first get out of prison. And it's someone you either did not know before they went to prison, or y'all wasn't on good terms when they went to prison, okay? Like Sarah and Michael. 
who knew each other before he went to prison, but he wasn't shit before going to prison. And she then married him in prison and got knocked up the day he got out, okay? Now, with these two, she did not know this man before he was in prison. And she got knocked up when? As soon as he got out. I'm my like, girl, ugh, it's just stupid. Wrap it up. Stop getting pregnant fresh out of prison. These two train wrecks, okay? Destiny and Sean. I feel like in school we would say, you know, if two trains was headed south at the same time, at what point would they collide? These would be the two trains, okay? Anyway, so we see this is right after she punched him in the face, okay? He's in his car touching his face, seeing if his nose is broken because she punched him a few times in the face or whatever. But he still pulls off and goes to work because he has to go to work. And, you know, you're like, I hope this time apart, you know what I'm saying, can calm her down and she don't leave me. I'm like, why would you want, okay. Anyway, he gets to work and he starts talking to Hector, his friend Hector, whatever. And Hector already you know, she's crazy. She on some bullshit and she's going to make you lose your family or whatever. So he's telling Hector, like, we got into a whole little argument or whatever. And she was upset because, um, uh, what's is her name? Sarah? The, the baby mama called him. And so she was, upset, she was upset about that or whatever. Was caused a whole fight. She punched me in the nose or whatever. <laughs> My face is red. I'm saying she just upset, upset, upset. He like, don't she know that your she, she's the mother of your children. She's gonna have to call you. Like, why does she not get that? I, is she crazy. He then say she then asked me to buy her a plane ticket to leave. Hector said, make her walk. I say. Come on, Hector. Yes, if you want to leave me, I ain't paying for it, okay? So, Sean, like, I, I don't want to leave because, the one, I do want to be with her. You know what I'm saying? I think if I propose, that can fix things. But I also don't want her to leave me. To, I don't want her to leave me just yet because if she leaves me now, she won't go to court next week. And I will lose 50 grand. He's like, you're going to lose that money, your family everything because she is crazy and think about this you will lose your money your family your whatever all these things she has nothing to lose so she don't care she doesn't she punched you in your face on camera while on parole bro she don't get no fucks not at all or whatever anyway he do kind of bring up how you know i think if she meet kelly that's her name kelly if she meets kelly she would then see nothing's up between me and Kelly. She may be calm or whatever. I'm like, no. Destiny is bad shit crazy personified and a, a, a white woman on television or whatever. I'm going to leave that be. So we then see back at the house. Destiny's on the phone. I think with her sister. I don't want him thinking he can talk. T- <laughs> this is what she said. I don't want him thinking he can talk to the mother of his children whenever he wants. I'm like, they have six children. He can talk to her whenever he wants about the children. Like, why would you not want... Who doesn't want the dude they with to be a good father and have a good, stable, communicating relationship with the mother of the kids? I want to be a part of that. Because then I, I, I don't know ain't shit going on. It's crazy that Destiny is this crazy and has nothing but a prison record. Girl, anyway, she like, you know, life is too short. I don't want to be up here stuck, you know, having to be good. I don't want that shit. I don't want to set up for no bullshit, you know, bond. I'm saying, I'll, I'll fuck him up, okay? And I have his credit card, so I can just go and do whatever I want. I'm looking like, bitch, what? And she, her sister then said, oh, you know, we have, if y'all have issues, you can come stay with us here in California. You know what? I can Hmm. So we then see later on that night. It's nighttime now. Sean's getting home from work or whatever. Destiny. Destiny. He gets to the house. He's called Destiny. He's been calling her all day and she not she has not answered the phone calls. Are you here? He's going through the whole house looking for her, calling and she ain't saying shit is real quiet. Ain't no food cooked. Ain't no candle. It's, it's quiet, quiet, quiet. And then we don't know if she left for her because he goes out to the backyard looking for her and we don't see him say she's gone or whatever be like i don't i hope she didn't run because if she ran i know for a fact she would not go to court and i'm gonna be out that money if you lose that money you deserve it because you was a fool to put the money in the first goddamn place idiot (laughs) and 
now we have these two, Lindsay and Scott. Okay, Scott lips look like it went down a little bit, or could it be the angle of the, of the picture? I don't know. So, Lindsay's been out of jail for two days right now, and they are on their way back to the house from getting her ankle monitor put on her ankle because she's on house arrest. Um, since she could not go to the halfway house because of COVID, they gave her ankle monitor. She can't go anywhere. She cannot leave the house once she gets back. Because if not, she goes back to jail and whatnot. Okay, but she in the car still complaining about the house not being together. You know what I'm saying? I'm stuck in the house. So it's like I'm in prison still. My daughter's room isn't made or whatever. So we have to do all these things. To make me more comfortable in the house. Now, Scott is like, you know, she been in the house for two days. And we've been fussing. We have not had sex. Okay, I have been sleeping on the couch. So, I hope that we can get to a point of, you know, to at least get back in the bed. Or not even back in the bed. But at least to be in the bed together. I'm like, she just trying to avoid fucking you, bro. So... Um, she does bring up how, you know, she's sad because she has to wait 14 days before she can see her daughter and everything. You know what I'm saying it's so hard. People think it's hard, but you know, it's the hardest for me because other people out here and they're, and they're quarantining with their kids. I have to be without my daughter. You've been out of that girl life for like, what, eight years? Like you've been gone a long time. 14 days is fine. Calm down. Okay. Anyway, Scott then arranges for the little girl to come by to see her mama. But they see each other through the glass door. So, you know, they don't have any contact, you know, person to person. But they're sitting at the front door, the glass door. And they're talking on their cell phone. So, there's nothing, you know, there's no um, exchanging the body fluids or whatever. And then, I'm so happy my mom is home. I hope she stays out of trouble this time and stays home. Her mom ain't shit. You know, Lindsay feels like, you know, because uh, the little girl's daddy ain't around... Because when she went to jail, the daddy kind of just went away, 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 or whatever. So, he's, like, basically not there at all. And so, she's like, I feel bad that my daughter feels as if my dad is gone and my mom was in prison. So, I'm just kind of by myself or whatever. So, she wants to do better. Um, I hope she means that because it sounds like she can be the sinner to be sinning or whatever. Her mom said, I just hope... That, you know, with Scott being around the Scott being a good influence on her, that she would not get in more trouble. And Scott said, look, I just hope me and her can get closer. You know, now that she's seen her daughter, she can be in a happier mood and kind of probably just give me some. Scott, I don't think she wants to. Look, I don't know. Because she said she's banged men for money in the past. And this may not be anything that she is against doing. Um, But I feel like, it's, does he have enough money? For her to stay with him. I think she thought he was rich, rich. And he's not rich at all. He seems just to be him saying not living check to check. But he may be check to check. Because again, the house was dirty. His his truck seems old. I think it needs a well line because it was shaking the whole thing. So he may just be, you know what I'm saying, comfortable. Okay, he may be a person like I can move money from account to account to cover bills that I can't. You know, he ain't. I don't think he's either rich or wealthy. So who knows how long it will last? <laughs> and lastly, we have Chevelle and Quaylen. Okay, look, I'm a. T- I like Quaylen. Okay, Michael wish he could, but he could never. Okay, look, Quaylen. It's so cute to me. Look, girl, look, little predator. Okay, I'm like, hey, little predator. I think he is. I think he has beautiful features, and I like it. Okay, he. I think he may. This remind me of X. It, well, he, he does. Anyway, move on. So we see them hanging out or whatever. He's been out of prison for two weeks at this point, and she is taking him. To her church to meet and chit chat with her pastor because her pastor works with people and counsels people who have been to prison who's gotten out, you know, to help them get along, you know, what I'm saying, with life or whatever. Because again, he was in jail in prison for 12 years, okay. Now she goes into the other room with the little girl at like the children's church or whatever while Quaylin or Quaylin talks to the pastor. So he likes to. What's going on, son, or whatever? You know, he like, look, I, you know, it's just so much going on right now. You know, like the outside world moves so fast, and I'm so used to being in prison that moves slow. So like, it's just a lot on my shoulders or whatever with me trying to keep up what's going on. 
understand I'm in a relationship right now, you know what I'm saying? And I have real uh things I have to handle right now, you know, so I have to make some money, you know, kinda get a job. So all these things are just you know, so it's a lot to take in for me just being out of whatever. You know what I'm saying? He also brings up how uh Chevelle's family keeps putting so much pressure on him, you know, to like they say he using her, you know, that he needs to have a mirror. So he's like it's all these people saying all these things, putting so much pressure on him that he don't know what to do. And he admits like it's over it's an overwhelming feeling like I'm I'm always have to please someone. You know what I'm saying? In the past so you know you have to do what's best for you, you know, you have to make sure that you have a good support system around you so that, you know what I'm saying, you don't feel like it's so much on your shoulders. Like, who is the person you can say is your biggest support person? He said, my mom. Like, my mom has done so much and been there for me this whole time. Like, you know, she's the, the biggest supporter of me. And that's hard, too, because she lives in Texas. And she, her and my family wants me to be there. However, Chevelle wants me to be here. And so, like, I don't what you think I should do? In the past, I'm like, you know, you have to make a decision on what you want to do. Like, make a decision and then see where the chips fall or whatever. And he, he's like, you know what I'm saying? I just don't know what I want to do. The pastor, we didn't see him give him much advice besides, you know, make a decision. You know what I'm saying? But I think... He was expecting expecting the pastor to say, you know, you should go back to Texas. Or you should, but he didn't get that. It's like you can't go there for what you're supposed to do. You have to just live your own life or whatever. So we then see they on their way home in the car, and you can, you know, you can tell he kind of like, you know, in a little silent or whatever. And she like, you know, so why you not talking? You know, you not know, talk, you don't want to talk to me. Like, what's what? Did, what did y'all talk about? He was like, get him saying in your business. And I was like, well, damn, <laughs> well, damn, bro. <laughs> it was, it was, even when he's, it, she, I was like, well, damn, that's none of our business. I think there was a nicer way he could have said it, but who knows how good he is at being a positive communicator or whatever. But I mean, they was on the phone for all the time. But, um, you know, she's like, well, you haven't been talking to me, you know what I'm saying, since, you, since we got in the car, you know what I'm saying. It's like you're a closed book, like, you know, why are you so quiet? He's like, well, damn, Chevelle. Do I have to talk all the time? You know what I'm saying? Can I just chill? You know what I'm saying? You know, that's just me. That's my personality. I'm chilling. I'm not talking to you or whatever. Well, you told me in prison that you was outgoing. He said, well, can't a quiet person be outgoing? I said, well, God damn. <laughs> they can. A quiet person can still be outgoing. It was just funny how he was like, <laughs> he was just going back. He was going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? She then said, you didn't even tell me good morning today. You said good morning to my Ela. He like, what? you woke up at 7 a.m. Like, what is there to talk about at 7 o'clock in the morning? Like, I was still asleep. I was tired. I had to get up and get dressed. I was brushing my teeth. It was, I, I just, you know, it wasn't it wasn't an issue like that. But you thought about that and held on to that all day. So, you know, I'm like, Lord. And the fun, not the funny part, but the thing that he said to us in the confessional, he like she don't realize like I have been in prison for twelve years around men. You know we don't get up saying good morning, <laughs> and I'm like that's true. I get it. I completely. So his thing is he don't get up in this chipper ass. We're like hey baby good morning. He ain't there yet. You know he he said like I need time to adjust, and she not giving me time and space to adjust to this whole completely new situation i'm out of prison it's a daughter it's a girlfriend i have to be talking all the goddamn time you know what i'm saying it's a lot you know what i'm saying he like chevelle leave me alone i'm not in the mood to talk right now you know what i'm saying just let me be you can tell she wants to keep pressing the issue but i'm like at the same time she should get he trying to chill out just chill out just just Calm down. He said, look, I need you to um <laughs> put a sweater on and chill. I say, put a sweater on and chill. I'ma say that to people. Put us just put a sweater on and chill. Damn. That's my new thing or whatever. So he like you know, I love Chevelle. I love a little girl, whatever, but things are moving so fast. You know I'm saying I just I just feel like I should not be out here worried about making everyone else happy. You know I'm saying I need to figure out what's best for me. I agree. I think Chevelle has the best intention, however, like they've been telling her, that man been locked up for 12 years, and he is, he don't know who, who he is yet, and he do need time to just unwind, okay? I think when a person been in jail for that long, 
they're gonna be like two three months to just get used to not being in prison because when he said she don't get i've been in jail for 12 years around all men and she complained because i didn't wake up and tell her good morning like bitch i'm not used to that at all it's just and when, but even though her reply was but you used to call me in the morning and say whatever whatever i'm like yeah but she wasn't with that man when he opened his eyes but yeah that was it that was the whole episode it was good i am happy they back okay love at the lockup okay anyway i'll see y'all later that was in peace